Hello and welcome to today's podcast, Remote Operational Centers from Hexagon. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Brian, and today we're discussing mining's notoriously complex operations and how it requires technology to bring everything together in an operational center. From database integration, data management, operational and engineering knowledge to ITTA convergence and edge to cloud architecture. Today, I am talking with Senior Director Flavio Waltz from Alvarez and Marsal and they are using Hexagon technology to implement smart centers. So we get to hear all about that. Flavio, welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. And you explain very well. I will invite you to be with me in the presentation, <laughs> man. Hey, let me know. I, I, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> always happy to do a presentation with anybody. So yeah. Well, okay. I know I gave a little background about what you do and everything, but go ahead and tell us a little bit more about yourself and if there's anything else you want to share about what you do and what you nerd out on. What do you love doing too? Yes, yes. I, I always start saying that I'm a, I'm a chemical engineer. I, I love my professional. That's good. It's, it's, it's something like a nerd stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. All my colleagues uh, used to be nerds in high school in that time, 80s and the 90s. Yeah. So, but but I also have something cool. I'm do taekwondo. Oh, nice! I'm a black belt, four degree of taekwondo. Wow! I'm, I'm doing taekwondo since fourteen years old. So I really appreciate. Yeah. And right now, maybe ten years ago, I start to do jujitsu. Oh, wow! I'm preparing myself to to receiving the black belt by the end of the year. But the most yeah. amazing is that <laughs> I am married. <laughs> yeah. And next week we will celebrate 10 years of marriage. Oh, congratulations. And we are lucky to have two beautiful kids, Philippe, five years old, and Olivia, seven years old. Nice. So my life is a... Uh, <laughs> very busy. <laughs> exactly, very busy. Yeah, but good. That's the thing. Very, very good. I love that. Well, congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. So you're the kind of person that, you know, if we're going to travel to some city we want to hang out with because somebody tries to mug you, you've you got it. Oh, no, no. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Rio de Janeiro is very dangerous where I live. Yeah. So uh, the first thing that the master and the professor teach us is avoid fighting. Yeah. You are doing true. that only to improve your health. <laughs> And be more calm. Okay. So so walk away and diffuse it. Exactly. <laughs> okay. That's probably the best actually advice there is. You never know. That's the thing. You never know. Exactly. Yeah, I appreciate that. Well, anyway, thank you for sharing all that. That's great. Okay, so let's get into let's get into this conversation. I want to know what some of the biggest challenges are that you face when you connect all of this technology in a smart center. Well, first of all, usually big companies, they have what we call feudos from the feudalism. You know, you have management and the teams very worried only with their business and their own operations. So we call silos. So it's difficult to a guy in the mining, for example, knows what's going on in the dam yeah. or what's going on in the plant. And the other way around is true. So I think I believe what we are seeing inside our clients is the difficulty the, is to bring all these groups together first and then brings the data together. So the first step is let's make them talk with each other like uh, uh, we are a single company, not three different companies inside the company. And then they help us to define the best data, the best way to, to connect and to integrate everything. So first step is let's finish the fields, the seals, and let's talk as a single company. Mm. I think the human side is the most difficult step. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And and we, we've been hearing that a lot too. You know, as we as we do these podcast episodes, we do hear that human component. It's very challenging. It's, it is one of the most challenging things too. So that's great that you're putting priority on that and getting to you know, talk, listen, understand, which is great. Yes, and, and not only mining in oil and gas companies, pulp and paper, chemicals, infrastructure, we, we are noticing this type of, uh, of issue everywhere, you know? Yeah. People has 
objectives, KPIs, goals to be reached by the end of the year. And usually in the first three months, they try to work together. But yeah. <laughs> as soon as the goals start to be a challenge, they start to look their own problems, you know? So year after year, the, the problems still there. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. What are some of the projects that you've been working on lately? We are helping some junior companies in Brazil mm -hmm. doing exactly this type of command center, remote operation centers, and how to bring data together, mainly to improve operations. So we, we are using a lot this new word, smart operations, instead of only digitalization or digital transformations. Because really, we, we are looking the data as one very uh, powerful tool to improving operational safety, uh, re cost reduction, reductions, and also efficiency in the operations. So we are helping some oil and gas companies in the northeast of Brazil recently. Uh, I've been around, I travel to Middle East. We have some real estate and oil and gas companies also in Middle East. Yeah. And also here in US. Oh, good. We, yeah. maybe three months ago, we helped an uh, agriculture equipment company. They bought the steel and produce like rollers, uh, beans, uh, dryers. So it's all different types of companies. It's amazing. That's great. <laughs> and all of them needs data yeah. and needs to integrate the managers and the different groups of the companies, you know? Mm -hmm. Sales, maintenance, process, operations, and also procurement. It's a challenge. <laughs> yeah. Well, but it's neat that you, you get a chance to work with different industries too, because then it, it'll, I mean, I think you learn from each of those industries. I'm sure there's a lot, of, a lot of similarities, but at the same time, I'm sure that there's enough differences that you can learn. Okay, well, when we eventually work with someone from another industry, we'll be able to help them better. Exactly. We learn them. They, they, usually, the guy from oil and gas would like to know what people are doing outside oil and gas segment. Mm, that's good. Because... Sometimes they know their own segment, but is trying to discover, wow, there is something new outside here. I know everybody from oil and gas, but let's see what mining is doing or real estate is doing, you know. Each segment has its own digital maturity level. So, for example, if you look in food and beverage, usually the maturity level of digitalization is very low. So they are using very low data, less than 5% of data they are mm -hmm. using, they are collecting. So they are not very uh, well developed in terms of digital transformation. Yeah. And then when you go to oil and gas, the situation is much better. If you go to, for example, cars and airplanes manufacturing, mm -hmm. electronics manufacturing, the digitalization level is much higher. Yeah, so usually yeah. uh, those companies like food and beverage, agriculture with lower degree of digitalization is looking outside to learn with other segments like Good. oil and gas. Usually everything that can explode is more technological, you know, because you use technology since the 70s and 80s to, to protect yeah. equipment and people. Yeah. So. Usually chemical, petrochemical, oil and gas, it's module in terms of automation and technology to the other segments. Sure. It's good they're learning from each other. That's really neat. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's the way it should be. What about the difference that Hexagon technology has been making? How has that worked for you as far as uh, you know, creating a smart center? Well, excellent question. I'm pretty amazing with Hexagon development in the last years and there are, when when we are building a command center we should bring data since the engineering you know and the planning and the designing of the factory or the mining or the plant or their dam so that's amazing and how hexagon is helping us a lot because hexagon has technology from the design 
to the operations, maintenance, and also talking about the mining segment. They help clients inside the mining, underground mining, also at the dispatch, how bring the ore to the plant. And also when you look ALI group, for example, you have several different types of systems helping risk management, operation management, uh, historians, uh, collecting data. And you know that it's not a, only a matter of systems to improve the operations. Exago also bring infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, connectivity, and in integration. So uh, it's like... Uh, Big, amazing playground, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's you great. have uh, mining, you have plant, you have also technology for helping uh, the management of the dam, dam mm -hmm. risk, risk management, operation management, yeah. and also, like I said before, infrastructure, cloud, and connectivity. Uh, I had the opportunity to talk with your team, Hexagon team that is representing J5, uh, uh, yeah. a new team. Uh, J5 joined Hexagon group, I believe in 2019. Yeah, okay. It's a South African technology and it's amazing. Uh, once you bring J5 on board, now you are increasing, uh, improving a lot of the technology. For example, you are creating connectivity with SAP, with OPC UA, this is kind of nerd stuff. I'm, I'm <laughs> exactly. being so yeah. a lot of technical, but also connecting mobiles, Bluetooth sensors, wireless sensors. So this is something also very good to be part of, of Hexagon because it's not a rigid technology. Hexagon is always looking at how to improve the technology to become more flexible, uh, not a black box, and also uh, avoiding being obsolete because technology yeah, yeah. is keeping coming, keeping coming. For example, I'm very glad in the new partnership of Hexagon and NVIDIA, for example, mm -hmm. is bringing other type of digital twin uh, approach. We are not in the next years, maybe we're, we won't talk about Digital Twin, we will be talking about Digital Twin inside a metaverse. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So we can trust Exago uh, in the future Good. and the flexibility it brings in the, all products you, you have in your, yeah. in your company. Good. Well, okay, so speaking of the future, what do you want to see Hexagon do as far as, how, how would you like them to develop their technology? Well, I, I really think that flexibility is something that we will need. The capability to integrate with other providers, other tools, you know. Sometimes it's important to, instead of developing in-house something, is to use something that is already there to keep speed and to bring results to the client as fast as possible. So that's something that we saw inside Hexagon and maybe in other companies not so s strong. So I, I really think this is something that makes the difference with Hexagon. And what I would like to see in the future is Hexagon growing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Even absolutely. more. Yeah. And uh, look startups and evaluate how to bring new companies on board, you know. Yeah, I love that. The ecosystem is the big difference. Yeah, it really is. That's great. Okay, so tell me just one one last thing. I want to hear what your advice is. You've you've seen a lot. So, what do you advise others that are are you know moving in this direction? One of the main topics I, I'm bringing when I talk about remote operating centers is is very important to look the business end to end. And talking about mining, mining itself affects the plant. So it's very important to the plant 
talking about iron mining, if you are receiving every time different composition or granulometry of the ore of the mining, you have to change the set points of the plant a lot. So it creates something that we engineering call variability. And the variability affects equipment, affects safety inside the, the factory, and makes the plant sense a lot of wasting, different types of wasting to the dam. And sometimes you are saying something that the dam is not prepared to receive. So when we are talking about data integration in a mining company, it's not only because we would like to see better results. No, we'd like to improve safety. We'd like to uh, improve equipment lifespan and also environment because you are taking out something from the earth. And if you taking out in the correct way, you keep the nature, you know? Yeah, you yeah, that's don't true. send wrong material to the dam and you avoid accidents. Yeah. So integration, that integrations is not only bring more money, is safety. And after starting the podcast, we we are talking about some real life examples. Mm. And once uh, I was working in a offshore oil and gas platform for a huge company, and we are helping the control room, the automation. And at the same time, there are some guys doing maintenance in the other area of the off off offshore platform. And there is an accident. One of the maintenance guys died, mm. unfortunately, because he was disassembling a valve and he thought the valve is without pressure, but it was pressurized. And you know what? Of course, an accident is, no, is not, never only caused by one reason. It's several reasons altogether. And, but you know why? The control room guys, in one of the screens, in one of the dashboards, they had the information that that line is with pressure. So if we could return in time and give the same information for maintenance, control room, process guy, maybe this asset could be avoided, you know, yeah, because yeah. if he had a mobile and the mobile shows that that line is with pressure, he could avoid the accident, you know. So that integration is also uh, to avoid accidents. And it happened, man. It's it's terrible set. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you hear about them, unfortunately, too frequently. But that's that's neat, though, that this is helping to avoid those because, I mean... The more, the, the more that you can do for that, the better it is, obviously. Exactly, so exactly. That's, that's a good thing. Well, I appreciate you sharing that story because it is a good example as to why you know, a smart center really is, is, is a good idea and something that people should consider. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Flavio, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing all of this. Thank and, you very uh, much. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show. You are an excellent host. You help <laughs> us a lot. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. <laughs> Flavio Waltz, Senior Director from Alvarez and Marcel. Thank you so much for joining us. For more information, you may head on over to hexagon.com. Thank you again for listening and have a smashing day. Thank you.